church was also the diocesan of this ED4 council and the assistant presiding bishop of the Apostolic Faith Fellowship Internationalist Greek Bishop Party with the heart of praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. service today. Amen. I'm here to introduce the speaker of the hour and I'm pleased to be able to stand here today to introduce a young man who is saved and sanctified.
myself. Amen. I came for the sole purpose to praise the Lord today because he's worthy. Amen. He's worthy to be praised. Amen. And I don't ever want him to say that we did not give, that I did not give him praise. Amen. My life, I owe him praise. Amen. I owe him praise. Is anybody else have those services today? Amen. Woke up this morning, shining on your way. You got the activity of your limbs. Some of these things we take for granted, but God has been good. Yeah. Amen. God has blessed us. Amen. We certainly give honor to God. We give honor to uh, God who is the head of our life. We certainly give honor to the diocesan bishop and the assistant presiding bishop, Bishop C. L. Marty. Amen. Turning to his wife, Lady Hardy, we thank God for you. Amen. Bishop Alvin Smith, the council chairman, and Lady Smith, we thank God for you. Amen. Thank God for young people's president, go to Wither School, we thank God for you. Amen. We thank God for all of the pastors and bishops, and I'm certainly thankful for my father and my pastor, Pastor Myron Boyd, and Lady Beverly Boyd. Church, I'm certainly glad to be here in the house of the Lord once again. Now, I'm, I don't know how to be by nobody but myself. So, y'all just gotta get with me. Amen. Y'all just gotta get with me because I'm just gonna, amen, be myself. And I just wanna give what the Lord has laid on my heart. If you have the Bibles, I don't plan to be before you too long, but if you would stand in honor of God's word, I wanna go to. Second Timothy, the fourth chapter. Second Timothy, fourth chapter. And I want us to focus our attention on verse number 16. Second Timothy. Fourth chapter and verse number 16, when you have to say amen. amen. I want to ask if you would read it with me. It says, At my first answer, no man stood with me, but all men forsook me. I pray God that it may not be laid to their charge. Notwithstanding, the Lord stood with me and strengthened me. That, that I mean the preaching might be fully known, and that all the Gentiles might hear. And I was delivered out of the mouth of the lion. And the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work, and will preserve me unto this heavenly kingdom, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. And then there's a companion scripture that I want us to turn to in Ephesians chapter 2. Ephesians chapter 2 and the fourth verse. Yes, sir. Ephesians chapter 2 and the fourth verse. Can you have to say amen? Amen. Now I want to read just those first two words. Y'all read it? But God, you may have a seat. But God, but God. Yeah. I would like to use for our subject today those two words right there. But God. Yes. Sir. Today, brothers and sisters, as I stand here before you for the first time, I want to really draw our focus in on who God is and the position that he holds in our life. Every now and then, I think it would be wise for us to go back and think about how good God has been to us, his people. We should reflect on the things that God has done for us all the ways that he has made, yeah. the 
the doors that he's opened. If I can get us to just remember what he's done and encourage you in your spirit, I think I would have done what the Lord has assigned for me to do today. Right. This passage of scripture that we read uh, speaks to us about the loyalty of God, this first passage, his dedication to Paul. He's talking to Timothy and he lets him know how God was the only one that stood by him when all others deserted him. It has been God that has protected us. It was God that delivered us and saved us. As a matter of fact, brothers and sisters, the only reason why you and I are here today is because God woke us up this morning. Look at us, we're clothed in our right mind. We have the activity of our limbs. Blood running warm through our veins. We were able to dress ourselves with clothes on our back and shoes on our feet. He has blessed us all to have roof over our heads and food to eat on the daily. None of us are laying in a mental, in a mental institution. Yeah. We're not laying here across the altar in a box. Yes. Praise God, but it was God that breathed the fresh breath of life into our nostrils. And the church shout hallelujah. hallelujah. But we as God's people, we as God's children sometimes are forgetful. We forget about the times that he stepped in. Sometimes we become as the children of Israel. I'm losing a little part up here. Sometimes we become as the children of Israel. Thank you. You remember the story of the children of Israel if you've been uh, in church any length of time, you know how Children of Israel were black skin with the mountains on both sides and the Red Sea in front of them. Pharaoh and his army behind them. Sometimes we find ourselves black skin. We find ourselves in situations that seem impossible to get out of. The children of Israel had quickly forgotten how God was with them and especially how God was with them leader of Moses. Yeah. They have forgotten all the plagues that took place. They forgot the sea being turned into blood and the plagues of frogs and the plagues of mice and, 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 and flies and pestilence and boils, hell, locusts, darkness, and death of the firstborn. Yeah. They have quickly forgotten how God had covered them when they put the blood over the door of the doorpost. Brothers and sisters, that is exactly how we are today. Sometimes when we face our present situations, those huge mountains that stare us in the face, those family moments, fear arises. Praise God and doubt comes. We tend to focus our attention on the situation itself rather than the God over the situation. We forget how God killed us when we were sick. We make our problems bigger than God rather than telling our problems how big our God is. But we've got to know that God is for us. He's not a God that will leave us. The Bible clearly tells us over in Hebrews, the 13th chapter, and the fifth verse that he will not leave us nor forsake us. His word says, and lo, I am with you always, even unto the end of the world. Now, none of us are exempt from trouble. None of us can escape the trials of life. As a matter of fact, Job said in chapter 14, man that is born of a woman is of two days, and those two days are full of trouble. And then Paul picked it up in another place and said, we are troubled. I thought I was in the Bible reading church. We are troubled on every side. Yeah, yeah, we are troubled on every side. Tell somebody that we're troubled on every side. That's right, that's right. That means we are troubled uh, everywhere we look, yet not distressed, perplexed, but not in despair. So we all face troubles and trials. Tribulations will come. But I want you to realize that in the midst of facing your situation, in the midst of facing your trouble, you need to know and I need to know that God is right there. 
pray. Now, the Bible says that Daniel was thrown in the fiery furnace. Now, I'm sorry, you stole in the deep. Now, I'm skipping on y'all because I got to make this abbreviated. Now, the Daniel was thrown in the dead of lion's den. Now, but what I'm so glad about now, is that if Daniel was having testimony service, now, you would say,
Yes, sir.
Hallelujah. As I look around here today, and uh, I look at uh, Robert here, and the only thing that I can say is, good God. Good God. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. 